So this, this work in specific was motivated uh, uh, by questions around the position of the witness. Who is the witness and what relation to truth does he or she have? And there is this old Roman law which is called one witness is no witness, meaning in, in jurisdiction you always had to have two witnesses to establish a fact, something objective, something which was considered to be real and truthful. Um, but in practice, once you have two witnesses, you always have some sort of con contradictions. Um, it never is the same story. I mean, <laughs> there is this famous film, of course, by Kurosawa, Rashomon, and <laughs> the, the funny thing is it has been, um, this title has been um, translated into legal language, now judges talk of the Rashomon effect when the witnesses in court do not say the same thing. <laughs> so um, so this, this work is based on this idea that in order to establish an objective fact you have to have two witnesses, but once you have two witnesses there is uh, some sort of difference internal to the objective fact. And, but it's not to say that the witness has no purchase or no relation to truth at all, you know, that's not the case because, you know, in a different section of the film we tried to find out how this film they were reconstructing had been destroyed, you know, and it was perfectly possible to find out about these conditions, you know, there was no mystery about it, even though the witnesses were, you know, all over the place, everyone was saying something else, but still it was possible to establish some facts. In the film, I'm talking about, you know, political posters, images of martyrdom, and I'm trying to say that they can easily flip over not only into propaganda, but into pornography, into basically anything, you know. They are just circulating images which can be invested with any kind of meaning. So, um, to heroize or to um, glorify these kind of images is, you know, it's a form of religion, that's fine with me, but it could also be any other form of religion. I mean, it doesn't really mean anything. The political image um, is not only something which represents something which is going on out there, you know, it's as, as such, it is an agent. It, creates a reality, you know, it doesn't document a reality. And precisely because of that, I think one has to be very careful about what sort of images to put out in the world because they are going to do something. So I think the question of form is very important, not because of, you know, distancing oneself or taking a sort of reflexive stance, but precisely in order to intervene into the world you have to be careful about the image. Because it's going to, um, it's because it's going to act and because it's going to affect people. There are still very few ways to think about this, you know, you always think, you, you tend to think that on one hand there is emotion, immediacy, action, if you like, and on the other hand there is reflection and, you know, thinking and uh, uh, cerebral activity and so on. But now both are very much fused, you know, and the thinking and the feeling and the media and the immediacy are sort of intertwined. That's very interesting to me. I mean, this is actually a very old-fashioned understanding of truth. It's the uh, model of the confession. 
you know? If you confess something, then it's supposed to be true precisely because you confess it. No, because, not, I mean, the confession makes the truth in a way. And all, all these, or many of the first person documentaries are based on this kind of retroactive truth, if you like it, you know? Because a person has a trauma and he confesses or she confesses it to me, it becomes true. But, um, yeah, I wonder, I mean, it's a bit, it's a bit unimaginative, don't you think? I mean, for me, truth is nothing to dismiss. It's an extreme challenge and a very fascinating problem. So uh, aren't there much more interesting ways to deal with it? That, that's what I ask myself. And actually, I mean, I, I've had discussions with friends who tell me that in jurisdiction, actually, the witness becomes less important, let's say, in human rights um, trials. Because, you know, I mean, everybody knows that witnesses are completely unreliable. So now the focus starts toward objects, meaning evidence, meaning things that are destroyed. And there are so many ways to try to make objects speak. I mean, look at, look at TV, for example, all these forensic um, uh, TV series where people try to make corpses speak. I mean, it's basically what it's about. These people are dead, but uh, they want, I mean, still some truth is supposed to be extracted from them. So for me that's also very fascinating, the truth that things hold and the various ways how to extract this truth from the things themselves. Probably half of the contemporary art spaces, including galleries, art spaces, and so on, are located in former factories or production spaces. You know, there's an in, a never ending list of these institutions. So I ask myself, why? I mean, there's a boring answer to it, which is okay, the factory, the Fordist factory doesn't exist anymore, and now the museum moved in, and now it's something different. But the interesting thing is, it's not different. <laughs> It is a factory, it's still a factory. It's just a different factory, but it's still a factory because things are being produced there. It's a very, it has become, in many places, a very important sector of production, the cultural industries, you know. To think about it as a site of labor and as a site of potential conflict and struggle, that's, I think, an interesting proposition. And it would also deal, do away with this um, old debate around the museum as an elitist place, which is unpolitical by itself, and I would argue it is political in itself, because it has these dramatic um, labor conditions. You know, I mean, I would say that probably 50% of people who work in the art sector are not getting paid. I mean, they, they, the museums are sort of, this whole economy is predicated on unpaid labor. You know, it's like the dark matter which is holding together this universe. and. Thus, I would say every museum is a tremendously political space. The thing is, the, you are a factory because <laughs> you already embody the whole system of hierarchies of a normal factory. I mean, you are your own boss and you exploit yourself, basically. So you are sort of a combined um, Fordist factory. You don't need a boss anymore who's going to exploit you, you know. It's been outsourced, you can take care of it yourself. What I think is really very, very basic and much more difficult, meaning how can I, as somebody who works in this field, develop any sort of su sustainable solidarity yeah. with the person next to me, you know, because the conditions force us to be competitors. And that's a very basic problem, but it's so uh, massive, you know. So, I mean, this is, this is really the, 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 for me, the real, yeah, the, the real urgent questions are really in, in, in very simple things.